the illusion that he performed on that final world tour is a trick that he called Einstein's theory of living in the fourth dimension. Today it is known by magicians all around the world as the million dollar mystery. I'll show you what it looks like. David's holding the front, Jonathan's got the back, and right over here, uh, Brian, you can scoop this poster out of the way because I don't want anyone to miss the million dollar mystery. This is what you should be keeping your eye on. This is the cabinet. It's, you can see it's wide open. The sides are made out of doors. You can clearly see every corner inside the cabinet. When the doors get closed up, we uh, attach that to the back of the cabinet. Jonathan can do that. This is the front. You'll notice that uh, each side is composed of a door, and that door has translucent glass in it. That glass is going to allow you to just barely see some of the manifestations as they take place inside the cabinet. Now. When audiences today hear Carter's description of Einstein's theory of the fourth dimension, they have a hard time wrapping their head around it, believe me. And there's a reason. It's because we have spent our entire lives in a three-dimensional world, and we like it there. That's because we know exactly what's going to happen in our little world. There are no surprises, but you step into the fourth dimension, which we have now captured inside this little cabinet, and anything is possible. The concept of time, of space, of volume, everything you know about those, you can throw out the window. I'll show you what I mean. We're going to begin with a demonstration of volume. That's a 10-gallon bucket. That bucket's a little too big to fit inside this wooden box that I keep uh, most of my props in. Thank you, Jonathan. This is a 3-gallon bucket. It just fits inside that box. Right now, all it's got in it is three gallons of air. The bucket fits neatly into the cabinet, into the fourth dimension. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is a tiny glass vial. This vial holds exactly two ounces of water. Now, here's where it gets a little weird. The moment I pour this water through that portal into the fourth dimension, the instant that water hits the bottom of the bucket, it expands to fill the space that is available to it. I know that's hard to believe. You're going to need some proof. Ladies and gentlemen, there is three gallons of proof right there. takes a little getting used to the goings-on inside the fourth dimension, but I'm telling you, what you just saw is not some crazy anomaly. In the fourth dimension, that is a law of nature. In other words, every time I scoop up two ounces of water and pour it into the fourth dimension, well, you're all experts now. You know exactly what happens. That's right. There are three more gallons of living proof right there. Now, you're saying, all right, what about a solid object? Excellent question. Something as simple as a plastic ball. Well, I can tell you this much. The process is the same, but the results are a lot more spectacular. Watch what happens when I drop that ball into the fourth dimension. It immediately multiplies, not into two, into four, to six, like that. It multiplies exponentially. 8, 16, 32, 64, over and over and over again. So, that's fine, uh, but what about, what if this were not a plastic ball, what if that were a gold coin? A perfect gemstone. What if this were a diamond? What if I dropped a perfect diamond into the fourth dimension? The possibilities boggle the mind. Thank you very much. Now, also in the fourth dimension, it is possible for an inanimate object 
to come to life and perform detailed tasks in a very short amount of time. I will demonstrate that with a little experiment that uses a couple of props that I have right here. Oh, by the way, there's still something inside that box. I'll show you that a little bit later. All right, to begin with, playing the role of our inanimate object will be a mannequin hand. No relation to the astral hand. This hand has no idea what's about to happen. We also have four ladies' gloves. A silver glove, a purple glove, a green glove, and a red glove. And somebody in our audience is going to select one of those gloves. And the way that we do that is that I take a perfect diamond and throw it into the audience to some lucky spectator. Who caught that diamond? Who got hit in the head by that diamond? All right. Have you got it? It's a lady right there in the third row. Would you name silver, purple, green, or red? The choice is yours. Red. Lovely choice. All righty. I'm going to just put the red glove up here in the grip of the mannequin hand. Could you take that ball, toss it over to the other side of the audience, if you would, and whoever can... Ooh, a blind side of the audience. Nice catch, right? You've got the... Okay, this time you're going to name any card in the deck of 52. Just call it out. Four of clubs. Four of clubs. All right. That should not be difficult to find because this deck, as you people in the front can see, is in new deck order. That means it's ace through king of hearts, ace through king of... You, did you say the four of clubs? Yeah. Good. There is the three. There is the four right where it belongs between the three and the five. Okay? I'm not going to change the position of that card, but I am going to reverse that card and leave it right between the three and the five of clubs. Understand? One card, the selected card, the four of clubs, is reversed in the deck, and we're going to leave it just in that spot. I'm going to put the deck of cards back in the box. The cards, the glove, and the hand go through our portal into the fourth dimension. Now, faster than I can even say it, that hand jumps off its little perch and slides into that glove, removes the cards from the pack, runs through the deck, picks out one card, hops back up on its perch, and does it before I can even finish explaining it. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that. There is... <laughs> The hand wearing the red glove. Now, wait a minute. You mentioned the four of clubs, am I right? Yeah. We're going to go down the deck through the hearts. There's the ace, two, three, and five. There is no four of clubs. There is no reversed card in that deck, ladies and gentlemen. And that is because, because the card in the gloved hand is none other than the four of hearts. Well, I'm going to try another brief experiment using the concept of volume. You'll notice that this uh, box here, oops, good, uh, contains about six cubic feet of space. Six cubic feet. Whereas the uh, cabinet is just over a foot wide. Now, here's what that means. If I were to push just the end of this box into the cabinet, I could only get that much in before the cabinet was completely filled. Am I right? Now, if what I've just said makes any sense at all to you folks, then what you're about to see is completely impossible. Watch. I'm believing that a box made out of solid wood and solid brass fits inside that tiny cabinet. But I assure you, it is in there. Not only will it be contained in there, but it will be able to revolve in place. It can spin over this way. It can turn upside down. You don't believe it, I know, so the only way to prove it is to stop it after turning a full 90 degrees. Ladies and gentlemen, there's that box 90 degrees later. Gentlemen, pull that box back into the third dimension for me, if you will. We'll put it right over there. Yes, we will. 
Perfect. Oh, did I mention there was still something inside the box? Now's when you get to find out what it is. Thank you.